really very important from credit management perspective. You have the rules that you need to specify. You can also give a score that if you want to give manually, you can give it or alternatively you can calculate it. How will you calculate how it will come? I will let you know. Okay, so the rules, credit rules will be there and I will explain you what actually the credit rule stands for. You will define different rules, depends upon the nature of the customer. As I told you, you will have different type of customers that you will classify depends upon the business needs. You have your own intercompany customers, but at different entities. And you will also have a private customer that is an external customers. And you classify the customers with the small as well as the major customers. Major customers means who will make a huge purchases from you and I mean from your business and small customers means the customers with you know so and so amount. But then similarly you have uh, a known customers and the new customers and so on. There are different customers there depends upon the classification you will set up the rule. Example I'll give you like if you have an intercompany, intercompany customers, is it really necessary to do a credit check? It is your own group of company, right? You have your, your subsidiary somewhere. Subsidiary company is nothing but your uh, uh, group of company. But to make supplies to that company, I don't think that you need to do any credit check. At that time, you say that no credit check is required. Okay, so for that, you set up a separate rule. Similarly, you have a major customer. Major customer means he always makes huge purchases. And each invoice will have, uh, run in you know, thousands of dollars, like it could be 50,000, it could be 70,000 or 100,000 of each invoice. And in each month, you will take at least you know, six to seven uh, invoices. It means at the end of the month, the, uh, the, the amount that has to come from the customer to turn even into million dollars. The millions of dollars means that you have to monitor that customer very closely, whether you are getting the payments on time or not whether the capacity of the customer, like financial capacity, as well as the business that the customer is running is really uh, you know, strong enough to provide a proper credit. And the risk that you defend for the customer will be relatively high because the invoices that you are raising for the customer is very huge. And that the number of invoices are more in each month. And the risk will be very high. So you will define certain set of rules for the customer to do a credit check. So that, that goes in a different type of uh, uh, rule that you uh, set up, which is in a, a, a different category. And there are customers uh, who will buy, you know, $2,000, $3,000, dollars worth of invoices or uh, material. Then you don't have to, you will set up the credit check, but, you know, uh, the rules will be uh, certainly different. They are not stringent. Like that, depends upon the customer classification categorization, you have to define a different rules. You have a customers like you know international customers. International customers means you are nothing but you are doing an export business. When you do an export business, most of the export business they are backed by LCs. LCs means letter of credit where bank ensures that if you supply the material as per the terms and conditions of letter of credit, the payment will be made to you. Then, it, then at the time what happens, bank is giving a guarantee for your proper supply. Then if bank is giving a guarantee, then you don't have to do any credit check for them. You don't have to maintain any credit check rules. Like whenever you maintain a business partner for each customer, at the time of creating the customer from, from at the time of creating the customers, your central team who will take the responsibility of creating the master data, they maintain within a, a relevant information. But if it comes to FSM credit management, the manager of the credit department, he will look into the parameters and assign appropriate rule here. As I said, that is a one of the one of the beautiful feature of this FSCM credit management is this portion of access would be given to credit department. Okay, and whereas the address and other fields and the payment transaction, that information can be filled by other people, but this type of information can be filled by only your credit department. Okay, now it's coming to the uh, risk class. The class will be again is a something where your uh, uh, you know credit score of the customers will be determined. Is the high default risk, low default risk, medium default risk, no default risk, the very uh, high default risk. So these the risk classes we will discuss when we do a conflict setting. This is the rules and risk classes. You know they are relevant to determine and do a credit check. Now coming to credit check rule. 
we have a different rules that we will define whether it is in a, a dynamically done or static would be done most of the cases it will be dynamic dynamic means at the time of doing a, a sales order as well as uh, uh, you know uh, order creation sales order creation and delivery and uh, this is another important interview process that happens in case if you are not exposed to standard SAP credit management that is at what level the credit check would be done in SAP? It would be done at two places. One is at the time of creating a sales order. The second one is it is at the time of doing a delivery. Delivery of the goods is also sales functionality. Creation of sales order is also uh, SD functionality. Now what we do here is for the customer where the credit check has to be happened, how it has to be happened, we will define that with the help of your uh, uh, SD team. Then we will define the credit check rule in FSM credit management. Your credit department manager will closely work with the sales team to determine all these things. Now customer grouping, whether it's a corporate or small medium customers or sub sales. This is only for uh, you know information purpose, this customer grouping. Okay. Now coming to this one, like you know, rating. This rating is from your external credit agency and the second thing is you will set up the rating procedure here how you want to define suppose if it's a tenant trust the data comes from the tenant trust then you will set up these rates here once we do this in the uh, configuration then we'll update this master data how it happens okay this is all about your credit profile tab this is called tab under this tab these are the fields that will come we are still as of now only at the business partner level. Unless this business partner is completed, we would not be going to config. The approach is first we will look into the master data fields, then we do configuration, then we will uh, see that how those configuration is impacting your business partner uh, master data, then we will run the transaction and we will see that all possible scenarios wherever it is, uh, system is allowing us. Now, coming to the credit worthiness data, in case if any of your customers, you in the credit profile, within the credit worthiness data, I'm talking about. The, in, in case if you want to uh, have an additional fields, where if you have the customer's file appellate, or you have a bank a bankruptcy chapter 14 and chapter 7, which you know typically customers will file it. If the customer is any foreclosure, foreclosure means if they do any foreclosure of the stock exchange as well as other things that what are the dates, relevant dates. This will give a heads up that that customer should not be made any more supply. Okay, what happens is the customer is making a regular payments to you, but in the market his condition is not really strong enough, and he might have filed in a bankruptcy either in the chapter seven or chapter fourteen, or he might have filed an affidavit, or he might have declared a foreclosure. If you if you have that information, it is better to fill this. And second thing is, at the time of doing in a, a, a credit information from external agencies that customer may have uh, experience you may have experience with a customer in the past that he filed bankruptcy in uh, you know two years ago three years ago but because of the special packages given by the government or by the bank now they are doing the business okay but even such type of scenarios it is better to maintain such type of uh, uh, data in the records so that you always keep a special eye on them. You always keep a special focus on those customers and ensure that the financial capacity is in good state, in good shape, good shape, and you'll be able to and you'll be able to uh, do the credit check on and off. Okay. So for that reason, for that reason, you'll be you will be maintaining this data in case if you have that information and in case if you would like to maintain any additional text suppose periodically when you do a credit check then you when credit credit check means credit information check from external credit agency you may you would like to have some additional note about the customer this is the way you maintain you know this will right it will just open the editor This opens the editor where if you want to enter that, you know, this customer, uh, you know, uh, has, uh, has a foreclosure on so-and-so date 
and according to so and so information it, and you can you see uh, the uh, legal department has given opinion so and so whatever you would like to maintain you maintain the text with a appropriate text so that whenever they whenever they goes to this particular uh, business partner the manager will have an option to see what is being written ignored discussed somewhere and what are the comments of the different people those things can be seen here okay and if you want to maintain you, know, you can also uh, maintain additional info in the grade management. 